Hey there, welcome back to another episode of the Happy Even After podcast, and I am so excited for today's guest. So let me just dive in and introduce you to him so we can start chatting. His name is Alan Klein, and he is the best-selling author of 15 books, and my writer's brain just exploded <laughs> when I saw that he had 15 books out. He's a sought-after speaker, a humorist, a TED Talk speaker, and he's received a Lifetime Achievement Award by some like really well-known society. And his noticeable books are called Positive Thoughts for Troubling Times and Embracing Life After Loss. He has a brand new book that just came out called The Awe Factor, and he loves helping people find humor and not so funny stuff. So he is the perfect guest for this show. Welcome, Alan. Hi, how are you? Here's my little duck to say hello to. <laughs> I read that you were a humorist, so I expect like nothing less than that from you today. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll have a little surprise for you at the end of the show too. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, let's talk about your book, The Off Factor. Can you just tell me a little bit of, of what it's about and what inspired you to write it? Well, as I'm getting older, I look back at my life, Renee, and I noticed there were moments that I would say, like, knock my socks off or, you know, wonder how did that happen? How did that all come together? Or, um, just meeting a friend on the top of the mountain in Yosemite that I hadn't seen in 40 years, something like that, you know, it's like, and I realized that in my life, at least I call them all moments, A-W-E moments, uh, things that kind of uh, you don't expect and, and suddenly they're there. And I realized we all have those, but I think we're so busy on our phones, on the computer, <laughs> So many are the things that we don't stop and, and realize that those are precious moments in our life. And particularly in any loss or during this time of loss with COVID, um, I think some of that awe and wonder have, we've kind of lost it. Um, and even our kids, instead of, which is one of our greatest teachers of all wonder, even those because we're home with them perhaps so much, even they become annoying instead of awing. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, mine is totally grown. So uh, it's a pleasure when I speak to her every day at five o'clock, uh, which is one of our uh, COVID ways of coping is uh, have a phone call every single day, mm. no matter what's happening at five o'clock. and. It just lifts us both up, particularly if we had a bad day. So it's a tip for your listeners. If they're going through a bad time, call somebody that could help um, get them through that, get them through that time. So your so, one of your other books was Embracing Life After Loss, which is really focusing on the loss. And now this book is kind of the opposite. It's focusing on the highlights and those moments of wonder. Was that intentional to write books from really from two different places? Well, I, um, as I told you before we got on the air that my wife died when she was 34. So and she had a terminal illness for three years and there was no cure. But she had a great sense of humor and, and used it during that time. So I re that's when I first started uh, realizing the value of therapeutic humor. But I've expanded that over the years. And I also noticed therapeutic humor is part of positive psychology. And so there are other things in positive psychology, not only humor, that I think could help us get through the day. So uh, I wrote a book called, uh, I have to remember the titles now. <laughs> well, that's what happens when you write 15 of them. <laughs> right. Uh, you Can't Ruin My Day was one of the titles. And I, and I was on the way to the gym and I was having a great time. I was singing and I got to the gym and I was speeding and being pulled over for a speeding ticket. And when I got to the gym, I told people, I'm still happy, but I'm telling people I just got a speeding ticket, kind of proud of it. <laughs> and they're going, you're nuts. How could you be happy? You know, and I realized I, off the top of my head, the light went on, it went, 
I could not, or anyone can, don't have to let other people or other things ruin our day, no matter what the situation. And so I um, thought people need to hear this because we do let other people and other things ruin our day. I know you're um, dealing with people who are divorced and you let the other person tell not only ruin your day, but ruin your life. Yeah. <laughs> And yes, it's difficult, and, but you know, we have that power to control our feelings. And as hard as it may seem, uh, we give our power away. So I wrote that book, You Can't Ruin My Day. Um, you know, then I've written others about how kids, uh, secrets kids know, that adults ought to learn, that kids could teach us about being more positive. And this all led up to, I guess, this book, The All Factored, realizing that there is stuff to lift us up and make us happy all around us every day. You don't have to go to Niagara Falls or the Grand Canyon. Um, it's just there. And so that's, that's what this book uh, became. And how does someone tap into that if they are in such a dark place? Like I like to say that with a positive mindset, you never have to have a bad day because you have the power to have every day be an awesome day. And sometimes there you run up against challenges to that though. So what does someone do when maybe they are going through a divorce and they're feeling like, you know, they're at their lowest of low moments or any other challenges, they've lost a job or, you know, there's so many things that people are, are dealing with right now. Like how do you change that thinking so that it, you are no longer a victim and you're not, all of this stuff is happening to me, but you're the one in control of it. Well, I think the one word I would use is intention. And my TED talk you mentioned is about the power of intention. Because I have found when I put my intention on something, whatever it is, it happens. I got into marching the Macy Day Thanksgiving parade because I wanted to do that. I used to be a scenic designer on Off-Broadway and, and CBS television. And for years, I wanted to be a scenic designer got kicked out of Yale drama school and said I had no talent. And <laughs> I was a designer at CBS doing great big shows. Um, and my fellow classmates were still at school. Part of it was intention. I, you know, I did everything to become a designer. And I thought of myself as a designer. So if you want more awe in your life, if you want more happiness in your life, you got to put that intention out. Um, and the interesting thing for me while doing the research for this book, and actually last September, as the book was being printed, a study came out, and there was one before that too. And they took some uh, old, mostly older people, 60s, 70s and 80s, and gave them the intention of going on a walk, a 15 minute walk, and one half of the group had the intention of finding something that was wonderful for them, that awed them, that um, lifted them up. And the other group did not have that. Mm -hmm. And they did this for eight weeks. Every walk, they half the group had an intention to find something that awed them or something that was wonder. Or, and the other group did not have that. After the eight weeks, they found the group that had the awe intention. And I'm, I just discovered this new, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna read what happened. They had more positive emotions. They connected to others more easily. The uh, negative uh, emotions were diminished and they were happier and they were less upset. Mm all because they had the intention to finding something that would lift them up. Now, does and, this fit into the law of attraction? <laughs> yes, and I, you know, some people go, oh, that's, you know, Alan, you live in California, you have this, you know, uh, kind of, I forget what they call it, but whatever. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, it does, but I don't, I. I look at it from a different angle to, to kind of, I guess, woo-woo thinking. People say, oh, you live in California, woo-woo thinking. You live in Connecticut, you have woo-woo thinking. Oh, I had, there's woo-woo thinking over here. 
<laughs> he said, there's what some woo-woo over here. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's, it's thinking. You know, it is, it is positive thinking and eons ago. Um, uh, even the Bible, I mean, it said, uh, what is it? A uh, merry heart doeth good or something like that. Um, that is really all you have control of. Uh, I don't know you, Frank, uh, what's his name? Victor Frankl, who was in a concentration camp, talked about finding something to laugh at every single day because it lifted him up, which hard for me to even believe you that somebody could do that. But he, the basic premise is it's our attitude and it's really the only thing we have is our attitude because mm. things are the way they are. You don't like politics. You don't like the weather. You don't like we're having COVID. Yes, it's all there. And there's good stuff too. And there's, you could, you could turn all of that around and see positive in every single situation. Mm. Now in your book, you say that a raisin can teach us a lot about awe. In what way? Oh, wow. I love that. I was actually, I learned this from a retreat I was on many, many years ago. And we would take, it was beautiful. We'd take an outside in the hillside. We would give him one little raisin to put in our hand and to look at it for like 10, 15 minutes. And noticing that this raisin was probably different than every other raisin in the group or even in the box. <laughs> so you notice the color, the texture, the shape, and then to slowly put it in your mouth, don't chew it, but just feel the texture um, or in your hand, look at the color, but feel the texture, slowly bite into it and feel the sweetness or the little seeds in it or the texture of it or the any juicy kind of part coming out and then chew it for another 10, 15 minutes. We examine that raisin for probably at least a half hour. And <laughs> It seems crazy, but it really gives you, I have never eaten a raisin the <laughs> same way or, or since actually, um, not, not as long, but I appreciate that raisin. And so I, I think, and the last part of my book has this, is we need to stop, we need to look, and we need to listen to the things around us more carefully because that's where the awe is. That's where the wonder of the world is, that no raisin is any, like any other raisin that I'm holding mm. in my hand. Um, and, and again, it's like um, just changing your thinking a little bit about the world. And, and the, this is one thing I discovered some of the tests on awe was seeing something that awes us, like the Grand Canyon, for instance makes us smaller mm. um, and so we start to realize our place in the world who we are in the world they also found that it connects us to other people and i remember being in hawaii a couple of times and they have the green flash when you look at the sun setting some days it's there some days it's not but i realized looking back how it really connected us that all moment because everybody would go, <gasps> or even if it wasn't there, you would turn to someone and said, have you ever mm -hmm. seen it? Or when did you see it? Or what was that like? Even if it wasn't there. So it really does connect us to other people and that we're not alone in the world and that we're part of the world and can appreciate everything around us. So are you saying, and do you believe that there's awe in every single day and every moment, even the mundane, the routine, the, the rat race of trying to get through the day and work, kids off to school? Is there still moments of awe in that? Well, who labels it mundane? <laughs> <laughs> you know, who, who puts that label on it? Um, there's one uh, person I write in my book, she's a photographer and she goes out and for her day, she wants to like take photos of um, anything embedded in the, she lives in the city, anything embedded in the sidewalk. So she finds stones sometimes, uh, memorial, maybe people 
pressed their hand or wrote something in the cement. Um, so other people are walking over it and not even mm. seeing it, um, which reminds me, I often find, I walk my dog several times a day and I often find money on the street. Two years ago, I found a hundred dollar bill. <laughs> Most I've ever found, but almost every week I'd say I find money and I put it in a jar and I give it to charity at the end of the year. But I tell this to other people and they go, I never find money. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm I'm always looking for it. And I, in fact, one day I thought, I don't want to find a nickel or a dime. Um, I want to find a quarter. And that day I did not find a quarter, but the very next morning when I walked my dog, I found a quarter. Mm -hmm. um, and I told this to a friend, he said, oh, that's nonsense. You know, it's like people saying there's no awe around me. He said, that's nonsense. It was at a convention. And then the end of the convention, he came to me, he said, open your hand. And I did, and he put a penny in it. I said, what is this? He said, I was thinking of finding money and I found a penny. <laughs> <laughs> you know, law of attraction, whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter what you call it. Yeah. It just, it certainly made, Funny, even a penny, it finds, makes me happier. It made him happier. Um, I have a funny story about that. My husband and I went out to dinner a couple weeks ago and we were going to a place where parking is always a problem. It's really hard, hard to find a spot. So as we're pulling up into this little city, he's like, oh, parking. I'm like, it's not gonna be a problem. We're gonna find a spot right out in front of the restaurant. And as we, and he kind of looks at me and rolls his eyes. And as we pull up to the restaurant, someone pulls right out, right at the spot, right in front. Couldn't have been a better spot. I'm like, see, I'm like right. you just have to say it. Right. And you know what I learned? My mom was pretty positive. My dad was really negative. I mean, the glass was always half empty. Um, my, my father would not even go to the restaurant to park. He would park in the furthest, like three blocks <laughs> away. And then we'd have to walk. Uh, if somebody, his excuse, somebody might scratch his car, ah. you know, if they were near the car. So, um, but it's, you know, it's that, he was so negative. I, I really bless him. I was so angry with him when I was a teenager, you know, why are you so negative all the time? But I really am thankful he was in my life because his major negativity helped me be so positive. Mm. And so thank you, dad, wherever you are. <laughs> That's interesting. So you, um, in your book, you also say that there are certain things that um, a refrigerator, an index card, a clown mm -hmm. nose, all of these are something that has to do with awe. And when I look at that list, I'm like an index card. How is that possible? Can you enlighten me? Yeah, I will. Um, where is, I have it right here. So here it is. Um, but let me just tell you about the refrigerator because you just asked, and then I'll go to the index card. You just asked about, can we look around our house and just find ordinary things? Here's a refrigerator. So heard this on the radio as I was writing my book, there were three prisoners being let out of prison and the reporters were there and said, you know, what do you want to do when you get out of prison? And two of them typically said, yeah, I want to meet friends. I want to be with my family. I want to go to a restaurant. And this one prisoner really was interesting. He said, I want to open the refrigerator. Hmm. And I thought, what a strange answer. But then I realized I don't know, he's in prison 10 years or eight years, whatever it was, never able to open a refrigerator to take out a cold drink or an ice cream or, you know, can't even plan his own meals. Was just given whatever they made. Um, couldn't even get out a banana or an apple, say, from the refrigerator. So, of course, the refrigerator was like this awesome thing that he was going to be able to open. So I thought that was amazing mm -hmm. and illustration of everyday things around us that we don't even appreciate until they're right. taken away from us. So, so the index card, um, long story, but I'll try to make it shorter. Um, I had eight or so books published by Random House and doing very well, sold 400,000 copies. 
and they closed that division to save money. And so I had the rights back, uh, had a hard time selling them. And I thought, I believe when you struggle too much, things you kind of put out negative energy. So I didn't want to do that. So I made this card that said, the perfect publisher oh, will find me. I need that so, card. <laughs> well, use it. <laughs> Make love. Yeah. Um, Cause it really works. So um, for about uh, nine months to a year, I didn't find a publisher, but I looked at this every single day, right by my computer, many times a day. And then I went to a meeting to hear a speaker. It was related to books and to hear a speaker. And I sat on the aisle, there was a man sitting next to me. He was turned around talking to two women who said, we have a very successful publishing company, but we're looking to open a new division and we're looking for uplifting, motivational, inspirational books. And I turned to them and I said, I have eight of those books that are now <laughs> out of print that were very successful. And they gave me their card and they said, okay, send us your books and we'll see about republishing them. And I looked at the card and, and Renee, this was the first awesome moment. They were three blocks away from where I lived. Wow. So I took the books to them the next day and they start to publishing. I think they published four of the books and then they got two um, small or uh, too big for this small office and they moved somewhere else, bigger place. And I walk in at a big party. I walk in, a woman comes up to me and she says, oh, I'm so glad you're with us. I love your work. She said, um, and you don't know this, I don't think, but I lived, uh, she said, for, she said, I know you. And I said, how do you know me? I don't recognize you. She said, I lived for 12 years across the street from you. And I used to walk my, see you walk your dog every single day. Wow. And I thought, here's the second almost and <laughs> knock me over kind of uh, experience. Wow. Um, That's amazing. So, I hope you were nice to her. You waved to her. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I did. So, <laughs> Well, you know, it could be any, any, if you're, if your listeners have been divorced and they're looking for someone else, mm. the perfect partner will find me. The perfect job will find me. The perfect publisher, whatever you want. Mm. That's a good one. Yep. Put it out just like, oh, you want more? Oh. <laughs> Is that part of, today. Is that part of one of your books? Is, Is that it part an extra? Of my, uh, this story, um, I think it might be in this book. Yeah. Is that what you mean? Yeah. I was just wondering if you had that exercise in one of your books. I think it's in the all book. Um, I think. That's <laughs> <laughs> what right. happens when you write so many. You don't remember. <laughs> or, or in the You Can't Ruin My Day book. It's in one of those. I, um, I try not to sell the same story over and over. So each book has different lot. This one has lots. Of, I interviewed a lot of people about the awe in their life. And so it has some wonderful stories. And, and some of my own, just to give you a little teaser, uh, how I found, I live in San Francisco, go to New York every year, it's where I was born. Um, needed an apartment because my cousin died, I usually stayed with her. Went to a cocktail party in San Francisco, a woman way across the room came over to me. Uh, we started talking. She had an apartment in New York, she wasn't gonna be using the same week um, that I was gonna be there and she was gonna be in Europe. Wow. <laughs> and I've stayed there now like five or six times. And so I think some people might call that luck. Do you call it something else? It's luck. It's serendipity. It's awe. It's, uh, again, uh, if it works, why does it matter mm -hmm. <laughs> what you call it? Uh, it I love it. it. Uh, yeah. So, Alan, where do we find your book? It's out on shelves. It came out in December. Where can we pick it up? Uh, the Awe, A-W-E Factor. And it's um, 
Amazon, Barnes and Noble, local bookstore. If they don't have it, they can certainly order it for you or my website, um, www.alankline.com. And I think you'll have the right spelling. I will, I'll have it. I'll have it in the notes. All right. So then my final question for you is what is something that has happened to you today or that you've looked at in awe? And I know it's early for you, so. It's pretty early here. Um, um, well, I was eating some apples this morning and the apple, this awed me all week. There's this woman who puts out, uh, like from a supermarket, a whole box of apples, like once a week for people to just take. And then not from her backyard, they're like commercial apples. And so I, every time I take some and when I eat it, I remember that she just puts them on the front of her house and has a big sign, free, take them. <laughs> wow. Wow. Oh, it's amazing. I absolutely love your, your view of the world. And I love how you show up and you teach others to show up because I think it is a, it's a, it's a game changer. It's a life changer. If you just change the way you look at things in perspective, I mean, it's everything. Right. And here's something I promised you a little surprise mm -hmm. that people <laughs> could change their look and their attitude. <laughs> and so if anyone's listening and doesn't have the pleasure of watching this video, Alan just put the clown nose on. <laughs> and that's why you're a humorist. <laughs> Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure. Thank you. I loved it, Renee. Thanks a lot.